welcome back. In this lecture, I will continue my discussion on viscoelastic properties of polymers. In last lecture, I have discussed that polymers are generally viscoelastics material, which means that depending upon the temperature and the deformation rate, polymer can behave from a solid like behavior to a liquid like behavior. We can quantify this viscoelastic behavior by experiment called dynamic mechanical analysis. In this experiment, the polymer sample or any other sample is deformed sinusoidally at a particular frequency and the resulting stress is followed. So, basically you take the sample and you apply a strain sinusoidally at a definite frequency. Now, the strain could be a tensile strain or it could be a shear strain and de depending upon that particular experiment, we can define the modulus like shear modulus or a tensile modulus and so on. The other type of deformation can be also applied sinusoidally to the samples as well. Now, if we apply this strain, then we can apply the strain as a function of sine function of angular frequency and time, where this is the maximum train, strain experienced by the sample. So, this is strain shear strain, maximum shear strain and omega is angular frequency. We can use other strain as well like elastic strain. In that case, you can just replace this shear strain with tensile strain and corresponding tensile stress as well. Now, if this is strain, then corresponding shear stress can be like this. If this is a complete elastic material perfect solid, then the stress will be proportional to the applied strain. So, the stress will be proportional to the strain and g is the proportionality constant which is nothing but modulus and in this case we are applying shear strain. So, this is g is shear modulus. So, g is shear modulus. If we are applying tensile stress and tensile strain, then we can call this as a tensile modulus as well. Now, if the sample is a viscous, perfect viscous material behaves like a liquid, then we can express the resulting stress as a function of viscosity and shear rate which can be expressed in terms of cos omega t, where gamma dot is d gamma by d t which is shear strain rate. Now, in this case the stress is exactly proportional to the applied strain and we call the stress and strain are in phase, they are overlapping with each other. Well, in this case we call that stress and strain are out of phase, 90 degree out of phase to be specific, but when we talk about out of phase then we generally talk about 90 degree out of phase. I will explain what does it mean. So, in the testing for a viscoelastic material which is not a perfect solid or a perfect liquid, the stress lags somewhat behind the strain and this behavior can be considered as a damping process where the stress is lagging behind the applied strain. 
and in general the response stress will be shifted by a phase angle delta with respect to strain wave sinusoidal strain wave and the phase angle will depend on the nature of the material if it is perfectly viscous material phase angle will be 90 degree if it is perfectly elastic it will be 0 degree and if it is viscoelastic then it will be between 0 to and 90 degree. So, this is the stress and this curve is strain and you can see in this case they are out of phase. So, input strain is this and response stress is given by sin omega t plus a phase angle where angle is between 0 degree to 90 degree. So, as I explained before that for a perfect elastic sample this delta is 0 and for per perfect viscous or perfect liquid sample delta is 90 degree. So, in this as I mentioned earlier in dynamic mechanical analysis the sample is deformed sinusoidally and the resulting stress is followed. So, the stress is expressed by this expression and for a purely elastic response for a Hookean solid delta is 0. So, the stress and strain are in phase. If they are like purely viscous response like Newtonian liquid then they are out of phase their delta is 90 degree and for a viscous elastic response they lag with the angle between 0 to delta. The higher is the delta higher is the viscous component and lower is the delta higher is the elastic component. So, we can express this as before and from trigonometry we can express this expression in terms of this where we can also take this two term and express in terms of tau 0 prime and tau 0 double prime where tau 0 prime is given by this and tau 0 double prime is given by this expression. Now, this first part is related to in phase response of the stress representing solid light behavior and the second term is out of phase component of the stress representing liquid like behavior. So, this can be expressed this stress which is in phase stress can be expressed in terms of a modulus g prime and out of phase stress can be expressed in terms of another moduli which is g double prime. So, g prime is given by in phase stress by maximum strain and it is called elastic or storage modulus and g double prime is out of phase stress by maximum strain given by this expression and this is called viscous or loss modulus. So, please remember this g prime is storage modulus and g double prime is loss modulus. For a perfect solid perfect Hookean solid g double prime will be 0 because there will be no out of phase stress and this value would be 1. Similarly, for a perfect liquid sample g double prime or g is prime would be 0 because there will be no in phase stress. So, we can express this expression into this and we also can express from this expression g double prime by g prime as 10 delta from this expression and this is basically gives a measure of the damping ability of the material. If g double prime is higher which is which means viscous component is higher then the damping behavior is higher for that particular polymeric material. 
little more about G prime and G double prime storage modulus and loss modulus. For solid like response we have seen this expression before. So, for a perfect solid G prime is nothing but G storage modulus is like the shear modulus and G double prime is 0 tan delta is 0 because delta is 0. Similarly, for a liquid like response the shears, uh, shear stress is given by this expression as I have shown before. So, G prime is 0 in that case and tan delta is infinity and delta the phase phase angle is 90 degree. Sometimes a complex notation often used for representation of dynamic mechanical properties of viscoelastic material. In that case the strain is represented by this expression and the stress is represented by this expression where gamma 0 is maximum strain and tau 0 is maximum stress and i is a complex number given by this expression. So, we can express this is complex modulus g star is complex modulus can be expressed in this term and just comparing these two term sometimes g prime is called the real component and g double prime is called the imaginary part of the shear modulus. Now, how this experiment this dynamic mechanical analysis or DMA experiment is done? In DMA there could be various variables sometimes frequency is varied keeping the strain and temperature is constant and sometimes temperature is varied keeping the other two constant and sometimes the strain read, strain is varied keeping the frequency and the temperature is constant. So, when the value of G prime and G double prime and tan delta are measured as a fixed temperature then their value depend upon the testing frequency or rate and vice versa which means when frequency is fixed then the value of G prime, G double prime and tan delta are dependent on the temperature. So, generally tan delta and G prime are small at low and very high frequencies and their values peak at some intermediate frequency this is related to loss modulus whereas, the storage modulus G prime is high at high frequencies glassy behavior I discussed earlier that when the frequency is are very high then the polymer chains cannot basically do not have enough time to move past each other. So, it behaves like a glassy behavior and at low frequency when the polymers have enough time they can actually move past each other and we have a rubbery behavior that I discussed in last uh, lecture. So, the value of G prime is high at high frequency and low at low frequency and the value of G prime changes rapidly in intermediate frequencies in the viscoelastic region where damping is high and as a result tan delta and G double prime loss modulus peak somewhere in between range when this transitions happen and they actually normally differ slightly the temperature at for the tan delta peak or G prime peak actually differs little bit from the maximum decrease in the G prime value. The frequency experiment which is called frequency sweep, the experiment is generally termed as frequency sweep. In that case frequency uh, sequences are varied stepwise from low to high and G prime, G double prime and delta and corresponding tan delta are determined for 
each step. Now, if we look at the frequency dependence or the viscoelastic behavior, we can conclude few things like for rubber, this the values are shown here for rubber, this is G prime and this is G double prime. Viscoelastic solid response are dominating, which means G prime is always higher than G double prime. Storage modulus have higher value than loss modulus in the whole range of frequencies. But when you talk about concentrated polymer liquid or polymer melt, where viscoelastic behavior are dominated in terms of in 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 direction of liquid side. So, viscoelastic liquid response dominates. So, especially at low frequency loss modulus is higher than the storage modulus and above certain frequency the storage modulus becomes higher than the loss modulus. So, response becomes solid like at higher frequencies. G prime shows a plateau modulus as it is shown here and decreases with omega to the power minus 2 in the limit of low frequencies terminal region in this region whereas, G double prime decreases with omega to the power minus 1 in this limit of low frequencies. Now, we have talked about frequency sweep now, we can do the temperature sweep which means we can keep the frequency and the strain um, fixed and we can change the temperature and measure G prime, G double prime and tan, de tan delta and we can plot those three values uh, in as a function of temperature and we call that experiment as temperature sweep. So, we have talked about frequency sweep, now we are, we, we are talking about temperature sweep experiment where temperature is varied keeping the frequency and strain same and following the G prime, G double prime and 10 delta as a function of temperature. So, in this case the transition behavior, the phase transition behaviors of a very large number of polymers has been studied widely as a function of testing temperature using DMA method and the types of behavior observed are found to depend principally on whether the polymers are amorphous or crystalline. For example, this is a DMA curve, sometimes we can we call DMA X spectra or spectrum depending upon whether we are, we are talking about single experiment or multi experiment. Now, in case of polycarbonate you can see this is a storage modulus. So, this is G prime and this is tan delta, tan delta this side and this is G double prime. Now, you can see that G prime decreases with temperature and at a particular temperature around, now this is for uh, around 120 uh, or 130 or 140, it is it's drops significantly. Similarly, G double prime actually increases and it peaks around 145 somewhere there, little higher than the drop observed for G prime and the ratio of G prime by G double prime actually peaks around 150. So, it is around 150. So, this is the value where we get the peak of tan delta that correspond to the T g or correspond to the phase transition depending upon the sharpness we can call this as a first order transition or second order transition that we have discussed earlier. So, this is a T g corresponds of polycarbonate as we measure from a DMA. 
Now, if you look at the same experiment when done at from a low temperature minus 200 to 200, then you can see there is an additional peak of tan delta somewhere in minus 200. Now, this is generally are not is not captured in a DSC measurements because this is uh, this actually uh, related to very small change in enthalpy or um, or heat capacity. Hence, DMA gives us the advantage of capturing even small change in uh, like polymer structure or polymer uh, movement. And in this case like this is another transition which have at sub 0 and it is believed that because of this transition polycarbonate shows high impact behavior or high ductility behavior in spite of having a completely amorphous uh, structure. So, this is one transition at very low temperature and another transition which we discussed here around 150 degree centigrade corresponding to the glass transition temperature or Tg. So, this is uh, the DMA spectrum for uh, a blend of PC and PP temperature sweep. So, in this case we are varying temperature keeping the frequency same and you can see this two peak corresponds to tan delta this is uh, G prime this is G prime, this is G double prime and this is uh, this is tan delta. So, you can see there is two peaks correspond to one around 0 degree for polypropylene and another one around 150 degree that is because of uh, this is actually a field sample. So, the Tg is actually little higher than 150. So, this peak corresponds to around 160 because they are a glass field sample. So, using DMA we can actually measure the temperature correspond to different transitions like glass transition temperature as shown here. Now, besides the glass transition temperature other transitions are also possible as we described for polycarbonate at sub 0 minus 200 type in the last slide and that is possible to capture or detect those transitions by DMA experiments which are not possible or very difficult to achieve using traditional differential calorimetry or DMA experiment as we discussed earlier. So, we can talk about relaxation transitions and glass transition is only one among several relaxation transitions seen in polymers and glass transition are, is the most important and responsible for the largest changes in properties such as modulus thermal coefficient, thermal expansion coefficient etcetera. But besides glass transition there are other relaxation transitions in polymer materials. For example, polystyrene shows four relaxation transitions and it is customary to label relaxation transitions in polymer in alphabetical order alpha, beta, gamma, delta type where alpha is the highest temperature. Or, or alpha corresponding to the relaxation transition corresponding to the highest temperature. So, the highest tempor relaxation, temperature relaxation is always alpha is a glass transition and associated with a large change in modulus as we have seen earlier. And the other transitions existed and but the change in modulus or other properties are comparably much lower compared to the glass transition. So, this is a example of DMA curve for uh, atactic, uh, atactic uh, polystyrene and this is a, a G 
prime curve and this is your tan delta. So, you can see that we have four transition relaxation transitions and obviously, you can see that reflects in the g prime values also there are the transitions are very weak. The alpha transition which corresponds to the glass transition is very sharp and very significant that is why the modulus drops significantly, but there are other transitions which are weak transitions. So, the change in modulus is not that prominent, but they exist in the uh, in polymer system. As we mentioned that for polystyrene there are four transition alpha transition corresponds to glass transition which corresponds to the movement of polymer segment the backbone of the polymer backbone. So, the movement of polymer backbone corresponds to the uh, T g rotation of this phenyl ring around this uh, single bond represent or corresponds to the beta transition. Similarly, rotation of phenyl ring around this uh, carbon and phenyl ring corresponds to delta transition and there is another transition which occur due to head to head polymerization. So, as you can see that there are these transitions uh, relaxation transition can be captured with dynamic a mechanical analysis. DMA can also be used to study other interesting properties as well uh, like strain sweep. In this case like we discussed frequency sweep and temperature sweep in this case strain is varied keeping the temperature and frequency same and this strain sweep is generally performed before the temperature sweep or frequency sweep or trace relaxation etcetera to ensure that the applied strain whatever strain we are applying is in within the linear viscoelastic regime otherwise this will complicate the experiment further. And for example, if we plot uh, log g prime with strain then you can see up to some strain the sample behavior is linear the behavior is, uh, behavior is linear. So, we call this region as a linear viscoelastic region and similarly for a tensile experiment you can see that up to some strain this linear viscoelastic region is maintained. So, when we do a frequency sweep or temperature sweep we should remain within a strain value. So, that we are in the linear viscoelastic region. So, for a shear experiment we should have the strain value within this range and for a tensile uh, experiment we should have the strain between this uh, linear uh, viscoelastic region. The polymer samples actually can also behave like a non neutraline fluid and we can uh, basically classify these behaviors into different uh, type of polymer material. For example, if the shear stress and shear rate are linearly related then we call it a Newtonian fluid as we described earlier, but often this is not the case sometimes at higher shear rate the stress actually comes down we call this is shear thinning behavior actually viscosity comes down as a higher shear rate and we call this also as pseudo plastic similarly this is the case for a shear thickening or the viscosity goes up stress goes up and we call this as a dialent. There is also one more possible two more possible is uh, uh, behavior in this case you can see the stress remains 0 and after a value then it start behaving linearly. So, it is called as a Bingham plastic if, if, if the behavior is like this as shown in this uh, graph and this is a Cassian plastics where it start from a high stress and behave like a shear thinning polymer after that. So, 
these are different different types of uh, viscoelastic or non Newtonian um, behavior possible for polymer uh, polymer sample and this there is a advantage also associated of this type of behavior as I explain this shear thinning behavior help us in processing during processing if the shear rate is higher then the actually the melt viscosity actually drops decreases which help the polymers to flow otherwise if there is no shear thinning behavior at high shear rate then the melt viscosity will be very high and we need to apply a very high energy to process polymer. So, sometimes this type of behavior like shear thinning actually helps in saving energy during polymer processing. As I said that using DMA dynamic mechanical analysis we can do other useful experiments. For example, we can do stress relaxation where we plot g with time and you can compare a linear or branched polymer with a cross link polymer. For a linear or branched sample the shear modulus actually comes down after some time as the polymer chain entangled with each other and start starts moving uh, one past one another and the, the value of g actually decreases and ap approaches to 0. Whereas, for cross link material as the polymer the, the polymer chains are cross link they cannot get separate from each other. So, the value of g does not decreases beyond a certain value even you keep the sample or the stress for a much longer time. So, this entanglement of low, uh, at long time materials will begin to flow the polymer chains will move past each other and the stress and modulus decreases and approaches 0 value. Similarly, we can use DNA exp uh, DMA experiments to find out uh, cure curing like isothermal cure where we, we do the curing experiment at the same temperature. And in this case as you can see this is a possible scenario where at the beginning when the time is less we start the experiment with the low molecular weight sample and in this case g double prime is higher than g prime because we are talking about liquid behavior. After some time when the curing starts the modulus increases drastically and at certain point when the network formation happen in that time basically g prime crossover g double prime and that is the point we call g prime uh, gel point and above which above this gel point g prime higher than g double prime and because this is this is a this has this happened due to cross linking for curing this g double prime do not come back to lower value because the polymers cannot move past each other because of the cross linking. And if the due to this curing if the Tg of the polymer sample increases then the, the experiment at which the experiment is done curing experiment done if that becomes lower than the Tg of the sample then this sample the cured sample become glassy in nature. So, gelation occur at this crossover of moduli g prime and g double prime in dynamic mechanical spectrum viscosity raises to infinity at because we have cross polymer samples are becoming cross linked and you have a network structure. So, stress will no longer be approaching to 0 and post gelation as I explained g prime would be greater than g double prime materials become rubbery and may become solidify or may be liquefy if the Tg of the sample resulting sample increases beyond the T temperature of curing. I just discussed about uh, dynamic mechanical behavior which is related to the flow properties of polymer samples and actually the flow behavior of polymer samples are formally called rheology. The science of studying 
flow behavior of any material is called rheology and when we use the sample polymer sample then we talk about polymer rheology. So, rheology tells us how things flow or deform and we discussed the deformation behavior or flow behavior in details during starting uh, our discussion on viscoelastic properties. So, in rheology material specific equations that describe response of particular materials to flow. For example, how stress is related to strain and strain rent and we discussed most of it during our discussion of viscoelastic properties. Polymer rheology is important for polymer processing because to understand the processing behavior or how to conduct the polymer processing especially the melt processing we should know how the polymer melt flow. Also the and as a result the performance of polymer sample final product is actually linked to the processing history and also the performance of final polymers also depend upon the deformation behavior like how does a part creep. So, we also need to find out the flow behavior other than the dynamic mechanical analysis and the typical laboratory rheometers which are used like cone and plate rheometer I am not going into details about the uh, principle of uh, action if you require you can go through any literature. So, this cone and plate rheometer or parallel plate rheometer or capillary rheometer can be used to measure the flow properties of polymer in lab and this rheometers require small size 1 to 2 gram and this lab rheometers can be used for a limited shear rate range typically up to 100 second inverse. This allows the measurement of shear viscosity, normal stresses, dynamic viscosities and modulus, creep compliances, stress relaxation, modulus and zero shear viscosity. For high shear rate, we can use capillary viscometer and dynamic mechanical analysis as I discussed earlier. This is another important practically used technique is uh, called MFI measurement, melt flow index measurement. In this case, a sample is basically allowed to flow under a certain load. So, in this case, as we know, that is the flow behavior also depending upon the applied stress or, or, or load. So, in this case, the sample is heated and it is allowed to flow through a basically a, 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 a orifice under a some particular load. So, this MFI of grades or different grades of polymers can be ordered as uh, extrusion blow uh, similar to blow molding greater than injection molding which means this uh, MFI the injection liquid means the higher value of MFI. MFI is, is determined as per ASPN standard. So, which temperature should be used, what would be the load those are described in this standards. MFI can be related to viscosity of the melt obviously, if MFI is higher that means it flows better. So, the viscosity is high, uh, lower. MFI and shear viscosity are inversely related as I described. When the shear viscosity comes down, more and more sample actually comes out. So, MFI value goes up and flowability at low shear rate can be basically determined by this main flow index measurement. Rheology and entanglement is a important aspect of uh, polymer flow behavior. The elastic properties of linear thermoplastic polymers are due to chain entanglement that I have described uh, several times that because of the 
entanglement of polymer chain when the when the frequency is higher it cannot de entangle and move past the polymer chains cannot move past each other as a result the elastic or solid like behavior happens and entanglements will only occur above a certain critical molecule and obviously to have this entanglements the polymer has to have a minimum amount of size or molecular weight so that they bend and entanglement with each other for example if you're talking about a a chaumin sample if we break this small chaumin sample in small pieces then they don't entangle with each other we can easily take out from the bowl but if we don't break and we use large size chaumin then we can see that they are basically entangled with each other it is very difficult for take out the sample from plate using say a spoon or something so when plotted uh, male viscosity against molecular weight we see that a change in slope from 1 to 3.45 at a critical entanglement molecular weight so when the in molecular weight slow below this critical entanglement molecular weight mc we call this is mc critical entanglement molecular weight or me sometimes it is called me me below this the viscosity increases linearly with a slope of 1 with respect to number average molecular weight above a certain critical molecular weight the entanglement happens and as a result the viscosity shoots up very sharply and the viscosity become the factor of m to the power so eta 0 varies with varies uh, m n to the power 3 to the power 4 below the critical below the critical uh, molecular weight eta 0 varies with m n and that results because of the entanglement of polymer chains with each other so this untangled uh, unentangled when m is less than mc this unentangled they can relax rapidly so viscosity is high uh, low but when the polymer molecular weight is higher the chain entangle each other so the relaxation is retarded they cannot move past each other as a result viscosity is higher so entanglements so strongly affect the polymer relaxation and this is the, this causes a dilemma now to have a good properties of polymer the molecular weight actually has to be high so the mechanical property for example increases sharply with molecular weight before it levels of above certain molecular weight so ideally you should have high molecular weight to have high properties similarly flow behavior actually decreases the viscosity increases very much with molecular weight so ease of processing actually decreases with molecular weight the high is the molecular weight viscosity is very high as a result the polymer become uh, processing becomes difficult so ease of processing becomes lower with increasing molecular weight for thermoplastics this dilemma is met by a compromise so basically we choose a uh, molecular weight range so this is the working ra range so there is a compromise between the ease of processing which is governed by the viscosity and the property like mechanical properties so this is the working range on the molecular weight which balances between the ease of processing and the property and for thermosets this uh, balance or this dilemma is made by cross linking for low molecular weight obviously processing is easier because viscosity is low and on cross linking this processing on cross linking you don't require any further processing so basically curing increases the molecular weight so compromise no compromise required if the cross linking is done and on cross linking the property uh, the, the value of the properties increases 
So with this, I will stop for this lecture.